So we have another similar truss, a little different uh, geometry, which is why we're going to look at it. Uh, we've got some parametric dimensions. So we've got an unknown A, and we've got an applied external load P to this truss. This is pinned at A. We've got a roller at C. All right, it's a truss because all of the joints are pinned, and all of the members are two force members because they're all pinned and straight so the only thing inside any of these members is only axial force so whether or not we decide to use it we could draw the whole structure free body diagram forces over at the pin at a and the roller at c so this one is a little bit easier than the previous one, we could solve for those forces rather quickly. And when we say solve, we would be solving for them in terms of P. So let's go ahead and just explore the free body diagrams here. So again, whether or not we had solved for those red arrows is a slightly different issue than if we go ahead and cut out joint B. We could also cut out joint A, do the same thing at D right there and the same thing over at C. So let's go ahead and see what that would result in. So there's joint B. All right, we've got three members that were cut through, AB, BD, and BC. I've drawn all the internal forces in tension. All right, so we have equal and opposite over at joint A. PAB is in tension, at joint B it's in tension, and they are equal and opposite. And so this is very similar to the previous one. So we're not going to go ahead and solve anything, but we are going to appreciate, due to the geometry difference, that bottom cord is not straight. It has an angle to it. So if you look right here at joint D, Right. If we were to sum forces in the y direction, we'd actually have components of four different forces. We'd have that force, that force, and then both of those forces have a component in the y direction as well. So the reason why we're just looking at this is we would have a lot of simultaneous equations. Remember that previous truss we were able to kind of go through joint by joint. No joint would be very nice. Even if we had solved for these red arrows, we're still going to end up with some pretty interesting simultaneous equations to solve here. And we'll do a little bit more of this um, as we uh, work through frames and, and trusses and counting unknowns. But if you notice here, right, we've got four free body diagrams of points, right, those joints. So that would give us eight equation, right, eight equations of equilibrium. We have two at each joint. And so let's count up our unknowns. We have three external unknowns, right, F one, two, and three. And internal, we've got five internal unknowns. Right? A, B, A, D, B, D, B, C, and D, C. So we've got a total of eight unknowns. So this is a determinate truss. We've got eight equations to solve for eight unknowns. So we've got a how truss here. We've got some loadings, right? We've got something that spans, right? We've got a pin over at A, a roller over at E, and we've got something that spans nearly eight meters right there. So we start to see where trusses are quite useful. All right, and so this truss has a lot of members in it. And if we were to count them all up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we've got 13 members. 
thankfully, they're not asking us for all 13 internal forces. Let's see which ones they're looking for. GF, CD, and GC. So there would be one of them that they're looking for. That would be GC. It's looking for CD right there. And then also GF, that one right there. So if we kind of take a look at what we need, uh, we might be attracted right here to joint C. So what would happen if we cut out joint C? What would we end up with right here? We would have... Do that in orange for internal forces. That would be PGC. That would be PCD. And this would be PBC. So that joint has three unknowns. Two of them we're interested in or we're asked to find. And looks like we can get one. What if we do some of the forces in the y direction? If we go ahead and do that. PGC equals zero. So it turns out that PGC is a zero force member. Anytime we've got three members that frame into a joint and two of them are collinear, have the same line, the same line of action, then the third one, and it doesn't have to be perpendicular, it just not on that line, would end up having a zero force in it. So we've got one of them that we're asked for. So PGC is equal to zero. And so let's just kind of go back to our truss here. We really want to stay away from doing joints because joints have a lot of members framing into them. But if we could cut right there, which we can, we would expose three forces, so the force in GF, the force, the force in DG, and also the force in DC. The only issue is that we would have a big red arrow right there. We would have the unknown support force. So that would be our fourth unknown, which wouldn't, which would be one too many. So before we go ahead and make that section cut, which I'm very excited to do, we need to go ahead and solve for the force in the roller. So let's take a look at some free body diagrams here. So the whole structure free body diagram, the pin over at A, F1 and F2, and the roller over there at E, I'm going to call F3. So we could go ahead and solve for F3 by just summing moments at point A equals... Zero. So let's talk through it and then we'll show the math here in just a second. So if we spin a moment over here at A, that force, that force, that force, and both of those forces would end up in the equation, giving us one equation and a very nice way to solve for F3. And so let's just kind of highlight very quickly. All right, that's the cut Then I want to make right after I fall, solve for F3. And so we're going to end up with this picture right here. So that's a pretty good looking picture. Right? The only thing that's not great about it right now is that we've got four unknowns on it. And so we can take care of that one right there here in just a second. So, and, and then we can go ahead and attack the unknowns and we'll do that together. So whole structure, free body diagram, spin a moment at A. Right, one force, two force, three forces, right, the two kilonewton force and F3 both had the eight meter lever arm. So you can go ahead and check your figure, make sure you get that exact same equation. We end up with F3 equals 9.5 kilonewtons. And so now the free body diagram that we had just a second ago. Right now, the F3 is turned into 9.5 kilonewtons. So we could even then 
take those two forces and we could express that as a single force, 7.5 kilonewtons going up. And so you get a feel for what I'm about to do. And I'm going to go ahead and spin a moment all the way up there at point G, which is at the very top of the truss. And that takes the line of action. Right? That is a common point for the line of action. So we're going to end up with an equation that solves for PCD down here. So let's go ahead and do that. Spin a moment at G. We've got 5 kilonewtons times 2 meters minus 7.5 kilonewtons times 4 meters plus PCD times 3 meters equals 0. So there's the equation to find PCD. And if you do that, you would find that PCD is equal to 6.7 kilonewtons or 6.7 kilonewtons in tension. And so we've now got two of the three. We still want PGF. So to do that, I'm going to go some of the moments at point D. And point D is that node right there. So I'm some moments at point D. Go ahead and call clockwise positive. So line of action of those two goes right through point D. Same with the 5 kilonewtons right there. So we've got our net of 7.5 kilonewtons times 2 meters. Right? And that would be causing counterclockwise about point D. And the other force would be P. GF, the X component. So I'm thinking I'm sliding that force along its line of action so that it's sitting right at that node. So it's the X component that I'm looking for. The Y component would go right through point D. And the lever arm would be 1.5 meters and it would be negative as the X component would go clockwise about point D and so solving that we'd have P GF in the X direction right, which would equal minus 10 kilonewtons and so we just have the X component, but we would need the actual force. And what we would be able to do is use geometry. So we've got 1.5 and 2 right, that we've got from our picture right here. There would be the 2. We'll take half of the 3. So let's spin back down. So 1.52, and what we've got right now on the force side would be 10 kilonewtons. And so this would be P, G, F, Y. So you could use then similar triangles right, to find the other side, and then the Pythagorean theorem to find. Ultimately, you need P. GF. So we have the X component. We're pretty close to getting the Y component. And we would know that the square of the total magnitude would be gotten from the square of the X and the Y from Pythagorean theorem. So we have another truss. This will be our kind of last example here. So we've got a cantilevered truss. All the supports are on one side, so we've got a pin up there at K, another pin at A. 
So this would be externally indeterminate. We'd have two unknowns at k, two unknowns at a. And we've got quite a few members here. And let's just kind of take a look at the problem statement. And so it says we want to find the force, thankfully not in all the members, but CD, HI, and CH. So there's HI. There would be CD down there. And also CH right there. So we're looking for the force in those three members. So we would hopefully remember that if we want to find what's going on inside the members, we're going to have to cut them. Now all these force, all these members are two force members. They're all pinned. And we've got point loads at the nodes just on the bottom side there. So this is a truss. Everything is a two force member. So our plan of attack actually is pretty straightforward. I'm going to want to cut a section right through those three members. Right? That's an attractive sec section cut because I've only cut three members. If I cut more than three members, then I would need more free body diagrams. But I could just go ahead and cut it and then use that side of the free body diagram, I can avoid solving for the support forces. So that looks pretty straightforward. We'll do that in just a minute here. But I want to answer this question with you. Are there any zero force members? Anything that we would know that has no force in it? So we certainly see a lot of members. Now we you may recall from the previous example. So we've seen this a couple of times. Here's joint I up there. So we only have three members that frame into it. And two of the members have the exact same line of action. Right? And the same line. So any member that comes off that's not on that line is going to be a zero force member. So IC is going to be a zero force member. All right, look down here at joint B. What do you see? Well, we see those two members that come in with the same line. So we've got the one perpendicular, but we've got this point load. So that is as if it's a fourth member. It's another load that's applied to the joint. So this would not tell us that JB is zero. Actually, I could tell you what JB is. It's going to be the exact opposite of that when we sum forces in the up and down direction. So the same thing at D. There would be no zero force member there. So nothing else jumps out as a zero force member. Again here, right at F, we've got two members that frame in, but we've got a point load right there. So if we had two members that framed into an unloaded joint, those two members would have to have zero force in them, but we've got an applied load right there. All right, so let's go ahead and find the forces and the members we're looking for. So we're going to cut right through there. And we're going to use the right side of the free body diagram because on that side, there are no other unknowns. Again, the support forces back here are unknown. So that makes it undesirable to use the left side. We want to use the right side of the free body diagram. So when we go ahead and cut it, this is what we've got. We've exposed force in HI. We've exposed the force in the diagonal, and we've exposed the force in the bottom cord, CD. So that's a pretty good-looking free body diagram right there. And we've got three unknowns, so we'll be able to solve for them. And you would have an infinite number of equations at your disposal. And generally what you'd like to do is one equation, one unknown, so place to might start some of the moments at point C equals zero. That would give you a chance to solve for P H I right there. So that would do it.
We could spin a moment at point H. That would give us the ability to solve for PCD. So we'd have both right there. And then you would have the pick. You could sum forces in the x direction equal to zero. You'd be able to solve for PCH in the x direction. So that would give you a little bit of a plan of attack. Once you have the x direction, then you could use the geometry to go ahead and solve for the magnitude of the total force.